before we go to the next demonstration that is to the next demonstration script uh, let us review a little bit uh, what we know about the uh, time evolution of the density matrix because this is precisely what will be discussed or demonstrated in that uh, in that little script so the general form of density matrix that we will be treating is this it's um, just some because it's a closed system so we will have probabilities of finding our system in certain wave function in certain state psi n this psi n can be arbitrary stuff it doesn't have to be any eigenstate or whatever and it can evolve according to the schrodinger equation what is not evolving here are the probabilities and in a closed system these probabilities of finding your system in this state uh, they remain they remain constant but the state itself is actually evolving in time <clears throat> so this this uh, quantity the density matrix density operator satisfies Liouville von Neumann equation Liouville von Neumann equation which uh, can be derived from the Schrodinger equation if we just realize that each of these uh, psi and t's they follow Schrodinger equation with some Hamiltonian h okay so if we want to know what's the time derivative of rho t then we use the chain rule uh, we first uh, take a derivative of this plus then take a derivative of uh, of this so we have sum over n pn here will be the first derivative derivative of the cat vector that is minus i divided by h bar h psi and t and this has to be in parentheses now psi n t plus plus we have a term p n and that should be the case where we take a derivative of this part so p n is the same we will have uh, i divided by h bar because now this is a complex conjugated or hermitian conjugated equation to the one for the for the cat so we we have psi n t here <coughs> and this is psi and t h so if we put everything together we will get that we have an equation on the right hand side of the following form minus i divided by h bar and here we have h multiplied by rho minus rho multiplied by h from the right hand side which we also often write in terms of a commutator okay now the question which we posed at the beginning is uh, how we solve the uh, this equation and we are talking about some formal formal solution <coughs> uh, which of course in that script that I'm commenting here basically uh, which we will perform numerically so well we have two options when it comes to propagation of uh, rho so propagation of rho t in time well formally uh, when it comes to Schrodinger equation this can be solved by uh, some evolution operator that is this evolution can be written as an operator uh, dependent on t multiplying uh, the psi n at t equal zero so this we will use now so we have rho t is equal to sum over n p n psi n t psi n t that's our definition and then in the next step we use the we basically expand this here we will write that it is u t acting at psi zero at the time uh, psi, psi n at the time zero and the same we get here with just uh, I might conjugation well this can be formally written one puts everything together it can be written as ut multiplying rho uh, at zero and is also multiplied by the same 
evolution operator but I might conjugate it from the right hand side all right so this is this is how we formally can write the propagation the time evolution of the row and we can obviously also whenever we need uh, write it in some representation so uh, in, in matrix form basically in a representation so we choose certain basis of states n and we write the um, equation the equation we write the above equation this one in terms of uh, of these matrix elements so that means the matrix element of rho and m a general one can be written as this matrix element of u here we will add some uh, some unity again so there will be a sum in front of everything over k here we have row 0 and here we add another unity t and m that's this this one so here we multiply over k and uh, we sum over k and l so this <coughs> is nothing else than just two matrix multiplications so here we are summing over the same index so this is matrix uh, multiplication so it's nothing else than this it's basically just u t rho u, u dagger t uh, now we can also reorganize this matrix um, matrix multiplication in a somewhat different form so we can say that our row and m t which is this can be written as sum over k l that's this sum and now i take these elements and these elements together so there will be u n k of t and u dagger l m of t and they will form one entity here and behind that there will be row k l uh, at equal at equal zero so this looks as something acting on row from the from the left but somehow it eats both of its indices so this thing is called this or i can say that this is uh, these are elements of some super operator so that this thing here looks sum over k l u n m k l this is all of t rho k l zero well this looks quite interesting because it has a form of uh, matrix multiplication only ma matrix by vector multiplication if i would assume this and this to be one index here i have two indices but i'm summing over all of them and this would be this would be the outer index which will give me which will give me this so i can do something like reorganization of my uh, of my matrix elements so i can for example say well for every element one one this will be one one two will be two one three will be three and uh, all the way to one n will be n and then i say two one is n plus one 2 2 is n plus 2 etc so i can always organize a double index into one index so if i do that if i define if i define here an index capital i and here i define index capital i and here i define index index j i can actually write everything in form of a row j a row j of t is equal to sum over now over i u j i of t rho j zero so this formally looks like a matrix uh, multiplication uh, of a vector and the density matrix is now represented by a vector this is no problem because you know i have a matrix which has all these elements here so i just organize them into a vector nobody can uh, nobody can um, prevent me from taking n by n elements and organizing them 
into n by n uh, vector. Well, it's a vector one by n by n, n, n by n. <coughs> All right, so this can be formally done, or I can stick with this equation, doesn't matter. The important thing is that there is a quantity which can be called super operator, and th that is this. So super operator, it's an evolution super operator. Which I will just call U, or this calligraphic U, and then rho t let's use a different color on that a rho t is equal u t rho at zero so this is some abbreviated way of writing uh, writing this equation here time evolution of rho now for a closed system, both descriptions by the super operators, that is by a matrix with four indices, or if you want, by a matrix with two super indices, um, both these approaches, this one and the one where I just multiply from left and right with normal evolution operators, both are equivalent for closed systems. So this is very important for closed systems. The two equi the two ways of writing time evolution are equivalent, but for open systems, this super operator approach uh, enables much more flexibility and in fact this one enables to include uh, interaction with the surrounding again uh, the this approach i'm writing the time evolution of the density matrix using evolution operators this is not possible for a system that is open so for open systems only an evolution super operator can be written basically the an open system does not have a, a, an evolution operator none can be written okay so these are sort of two two take home messages from this and it's the same situation as with let's say a uh, wave function and uh, density matrix well, wave function on one side and density matrix on the other side because density matrix for closed system keeps exactly the same uh, same information as the wave function uh, up to of course the fact that you know i can describe mixed states but that's not such a uh, such a big uh, big win uh, well, for a closed system how do i get uh, a mixed state in the first place uh, so the, the the advantage of the density matrix is only that it allows a description of open quantum systems. The same thing is with the super operators. For closed systems, super operator and operator approach uh, describes or holds the same information, whereas for open quantum systems, only the super operator, let's say evolution super operator, can be written. The normal operator, the evolution operator, does not have any meaning, doesn't have any sense, cannot be written. Uh, for an open uh, open quantum open quantum system so that's all uh, the what is following is a little uh, description of a little script which uh, demonstrates the uh, usage of, or demonstrates the time evolution of the density matrix it demonstrates only this usage and shortly discusses discusses this which we will uh, leave for the case where we will really need it and we will uh, formulate we will find a form approximative form of this for some typical example of an open quantum system